As we celebrate now this May being Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, yes, we are focusing on and celebrating all the contributions this community has made, but it's important also to talk about what needs to be done to further help this community and also to protect it. That's right. Joining us is the first chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, New York Congresswoman Grace Meng. Welcome back to GMA3, Congresswoman. And we want to start first, though, with the leaked Supreme Court uh, opinion suggesting that the court will, in fact, overturn Roe v. Wade. I'm curious what you make of that leak and what role you think lawmakers should be playing in this as we await the court's official decision. Well, this is potentially a heartbreaking situation for so many women across the country. Uh, about half the states in our country will be affected, and it will be essentially telling everyone from a teenager to a rape victim that the government is forcing them to have a baby. Uh, and this is something that will affect so many people, um, especially people from uh, underserved minority communities. Um, it literally will prevent certain women, depending on what zip code you live in, from getting the adequate health care that they need. All right, Congressman, we do want to turn now to this anti-Asian hate crimes. And we saw a staggering increase, in, particularly in places like San Francisco and New York. And even here in New York, we saw, even on news oftentimes, these videos of these anti-Asian uh, hate crimes. Uh, you sponsored uh, the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act last year, it was passed overwhelmingly. Is it working? And how much time does it take for something like that to start uh, working and having an impact? Well, we saw the numbers skyrocket after the former president used words like Chinese virus, Kung flu, literally putting a bullseye on the back of our community. Uh, and so we know that there is a lot of work that has to be done. Uh, one thing that we are working on, obviously, is the implementation of the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, providing resources to local entities, grassroots organizations, uh, law enforcement to properly be able to collect uh, information and to investigate these hate crimes. But this is something that comes uh, at the back end after the fact. So that alone is not a magic pill. We also have to work on everything from providing adequate solutions and investing in mental health support. About half of the cases in our city of New York last year were uh, perpetrated by people with mental health issues. So what are we doing to help these people and not to just let them uh, be on the streets. Uh, and also, there's a component of education. There are too many people in this country who look at someone like me and think that I am not really American and that Asian Americans must be foreigners or they must be uh, from another place anywhere except America. I still get asked all the time where I learned to speak English, where I'm really from, and then when I say Queens, some people are just not satisfied. Wow. And, and Congressman, you know, we talk talk about these numbers and these percentages on the rise going in a direction we don't want to see them go. But these are real humans with families. These are incredible personal tragedies that I know you took the time out to spend some time with some of the family members of the victims of these crimes. Tell us about those meetings and what you want all of us to learn to take away from those tragedies. Yeah, I've been trying to reach out to as many of the victims or their families as possible. Sometimes, honestly, I, we just can't keep up. There's been so many cases. I've spent time and keep in touch with the family of Michelle Go, the woman who was pushed to her death suddenly uh, in a Times Square subway station. Um, I've spent time with uh, the family of Gui Ying Ma from Queens, uh, who was hit on the head with a rock and laid in a coma for many months uh, before she succumbed to her death. Uh, and these are just some of the stories. Um, these families are obviously heartbroken. Their lives uh, are changed forever. And Congressman, one more thing. The National Museum of Asian Pacific American History. This is something now you have a bill that uh, made its way through the House that would uh, uh, at least create a commission to study uh, the feasibility of having such a museum. I, I think this is something, a point of pride. I know this is just one step, uh, but still, why is this an important uh, uh, a museum and uh, how big of a deal is this one step for you? 
Well, we were really excited that the House passed this legislation uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, we're waiting for the Senate uh, to take action. I've personally mentioned this bill to President Biden as well. Uh, this is very important in the long term, again, to combat stereotypes that people have of Asian Pacific Americans uh, and to make sure that everyone, not just those in our community, but everyone understands the role that Asian Americans have played in the building of this country. All right, well, Congresswoman Grace Meng of Queens, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for spending some time with us. Always good to have you on the program. We'll see you down the road, okay? Thanks for having me. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.